2020, the combined scale of federal and provincial COVID-19 spending was almost $600 billion. Now, a new report from the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives suggests that the provinces have been leaving billions of dollars on the table unspent. We are joined by the Centre's David MacDonald. He's the senior economist at the CCPA. Uh, David, just remind us before we get going, what kind of spending are we talking about here? Because we're talking about money essentially from Ottawa, mostly. Well, that's right. So what I did is I went through all of the provincial press releases, fiscal updates, budgets, as well as the federal equivalents mm -hmm. to figure out of all this COVID-19 spending on actual direct measures, whether it's you know, corporate income tax cuts to PPE purchases. Where did the money ultimately come from? Where did it go? Who was respending somebody else's money? To really get a complete accounting of the picture so far of every measure that was announced through December 31st, 2020. And what you're ba you found that provinces have failed to spend significant amounts. Yeah, that's right. And so if you take a look at all of these big federal transfers that went out to the provinces, particularly through the safe restart agreements in the fall, um, it turns out that many provinces have received uh, money from the federal government for things like health care or reopening schools, or reopening child cares, and they haven't fully spent that money. Mm -hmm. And so they don't have plans, in fact, uh, in this fiscal year or, or the next in some cases to spend that money despite the fact that they've received it from the federal government. So that's one category of money they've received but haven't fully spent. Then there's a variety mm -hmm. of funds that the provinces could access, uh, federal funds, but they had to apply for them and they had to have the plans in place to apply for them. Things like the essential worker wage top up. And again, here you find the majority of provinces not fully accessing this federal money. Uh, you know, the essential worker wage top up, for instance, Alberta, uh, as an example, left $300 million on the table that could have gone to low-wage essential workers uh, through this fund, but they, they didn't apply, and so they didn't get the full value. And then you end up with another category of provinces, again, the, a majority of provinces, 6 out of 10, who didn't fully match federal expenditures for municipal operating and transit budget support. So the Fed said, we want 50-50 match on this, and the province says, great, you, you send your money and we'll match it. And then when they receive mm -hmm. the money, they said, oh, we're not gonna match it actually, but thanks for the money. And so, you know, huh. as we start going through this accounting, go ahead. Oh, sorry, no, David, you go ahead. Sorry, I was just, um, the bureaucracy. Anyway, carry on, David, please. I, so as we start to go through this accounting, I think it uh, maybe starts to set up some lessons for the next round of federal spending. The feds have another 70 to $100 billion that they want to spend in the next three fiscal years on stimulus measures. And so clearly the provinces are willing to call the federal bluff on cost matching, uh, particularly when it comes to municipal budgets. And so I think uh, as, we, as this next round of money rolls out, we're likely to see uh, more stringent conditions and strings attached to be sure. So is it, are the provinces just holding this money, do you suspect, as a slush fund um, to cover up their own deficits or to put into politically attractive projects? It's possible that that's uh, the reason. Uh, it's possible that they just don't have a full accounting themselves of, of, uh, or plans to fully spend this money. In several of the provinces, particularly Ontario, um, the province itself is maintaining a very large unallocated contingency fund for COVID-19. So there's a line in the budget that says COVID-19 measures, but it's not allocated to anything mm -hmm. in particular. Ontario is actually maintaining uh, across three funds, funds a total of $6.4 billion that could be allocated basically for anything COVID-19 related, uh, whether it's PPE to, to long-term care to supports for business or individuals. Uh, but they haven't, set, they haven't spent it so far. And so this is another potential source of provinces that they could draw on in addition to, to federal money they haven't fully applied for to offset some of the impacts of COVID-19. I mean, by and large, this has really been a federal affair. 92% of every dollar spent on direct COVID-19 measures is a federal dollar, and 8% has mm -hmm. been a provincial dollar. Even in areas like healthcare of, of you know, this provincial jurisdiction, 88% of all the money spent on COVID-19 measures is, is a federal, uh, and 12% is provincial. So very much a federal affair in terms of where the funding the funding's coming from. So is it, I mean, we've seen these, this terrible, tragic wave of deaths in long-term care, as you know. It, has some of the money that was meant to go to make those homes safer not been spent? Yes, in fact, in six out of 10 provinces, the, the provinces themselves don't have 
adequate plans to fully take advantage of federal money. So this is the safe long-term care fund. The problem is just don't have the plans on their books to fully access that money um, that was announced uh, in, uh, in November. Uh, some provinces do. Ontario is an example that already had plans in place to, that, in essence, they, they've already got the receipts they can send to Ottawa to say, yeah, definitely send us the full value of this money. We have the plans in place. But there are plenty of provinces that, that don't have the plans in place. Now, nothing's to say that this situation isn't going to change. Uh, you know, I, I took a look mm -hmm. at the, the budgets for this fiscal year, next fiscal year, where, where they were available. Uh, and hopefully this report pushes several of the provinces to spend this unspent federal money, apply for these funds that exist that they haven't fully accessed uh, and really, uh, you know, make up the room that they haven't spent so far uh, on COVID-19 measures. I mean, Ontario and Alberta, for instance, are spending 1% of their GDP on COVID-19 measures. BC is spending 3% of its GDP on COVID-19 mm -hmm. measures. So even in the big provinces, there's a huge difference between what the provinces are committing to this, uh, to this endeavor. And you think, just you touched on this at the start, um, in some cases, the provinces were supposed to come up with matching funding. And in some places like PEI, Nova Scotia, and New Brunswick, they seem to have just ignored that in the case of municipalities. You think the feds might, as you put it, call their bluff and say, OK, well, you're not just going to get more money if you won't go along with the, with the plan. Yeah, I suspect that in this next round of funding, the 70 to $100 billion that the feds are planning to spend in the next three fiscal years, uh, that, that there will likely be more strings attached and that this type of mm -hmm. pass that was given to six out of 10 provinces actually didn't match or didn't fully match the, the, the federal money for municipal sports. I mean, that's that's a fair amount of people, uh, that's a fair amount of provinces not, not fully matching federal support. And so what may have to happen is if provinces aren't willing to spend money in the the ways that the federal government would like, say, for instance, on national long-term care standards or on, uh, you know, affordable childcare, mm -hmm. it may well be that the federal government will have to say uh, to certain provinces, okay, well, we, we aren't providing our side if you're not going to take up your side in terms of mm -hmm. meeting those standards and, and cost matching. Because, I mean, clearly the provinces will call the federal bluff on, on COVID-19 spending. David, we've only about 30 seconds. Could the feds just say, well, the heck with you and bypass them and give the money directly to municipalities, for example? Well, they have. It depends on the program. They certainly have, in many cases, done direct transfers. I mean, the, the rapid housing initiative, uh, they, it was just direct transfers to the cities to spend money uh, making housing more affordable. Uh, but many of these big issues around health care, for instance, I mean, this is health care, child care. Uh, schools. I mean, this is this is provincial jurisdiction. You have to work with the provinces um, to, to move sure. these files forward. Um, but you may be you may have to you may have to walk away in the case that uh, the provinces don't want to go along with federal plans. David, thanks very much indeed. David McDonald of the Canadian Centre for Policy Alternatives.